G'day, Shoshana here. Uh, I have been asked to do what's in my tramping pack. So I'm going to show you what we put in our tramping pack for one night, for one toddler and one adult. So if we're going for one night, food uh, isn't generally much of an issue. If we're going multiple days, we'd have more dehydrated meals and it'd be a lot more planning. But if it's just an overnighter, we can take a lot more things like fresh fruit. And Alrighty, so here is all the food for one adult, one toddler overnight tramping. So I'm usually a little bit random with all my food, but this is a general idea. I have milk powder in here and cups of tea and hot chocolate and some peppermint tea in this bag. I use these bags because uh, I eat the balls first and then they make really good reusable Ziploc bags and they're much sturdier than um, the Ziploc bags that you'd buy. And then I've got some Raro that we used last trip, so I've got that there. I love having a bit of juice to make the trip extra exciting. And then for dinner, we have mashed potato. So this is, you can get these in the supermarket. They are really cheap, just a big bag of mash and all you do is add hot water and they rehydrate. I mix mine with dehydrated onion flakes and a little bit of salt and pepper to season and then I will mix some surprise peas in. I normally take a small bag of peas but this time it's a big bag so I won't use the whole one I'll probably split it in half and then I have a packet of biltong uh, dried meat which I love taking tramping with me because lots of protein and um, that is two meals for us that'll be breakfast one morning maybe and then um, dinner with this mashed potato uh, the next thing we have here is this stuff here I got from the supermarket I want to try it out to see what it's like it says it's like a snack thing so I'm gonna see how much uh, how how filling it's gonna be so for breakfast we have instant oats and then we usually have a little bit of uh, this biltong later on in the morning so we've got these that you just chuck hot water in and they're ready to go. So for day one we've got carrot snacks, apples and strawberries. We'll probably eat the apples on day one to save the weight. And then I've got some dehydrated apples in this mango Ziploc bag and some dried figs for day two if we're still snacky. And then I have some crackers here, they're super lightweight and rice crackers because my toddler loves rice crackers always good to have on hand because they don't weigh anything and they're a good snack and of course trail mix good old trail mix i've mixed some marshmallows and chocolate chips into it to make it a bit more interesting and then this is my toddler's treat he loves these squeezy pouches and they're not dehydrated so they have got a bit of weight in them but for him it's just a little treat that he can uh, enjoy while we're tramping and it's usually his well done buddy you've done awesome kind of reward thing and then in this little container is the incentives so we've got a few marshmallows and chocolate chips and this is what I bring out when he's a bit tired and needs a little bit of a pick-me-up or needs to have like a bit of a scavenger hunt up the track for them and then for lunch on day two we've got sandwiches made up just to make and lastly I have two packets of noodles and one packet of beef jerky this is from a supermarket and then this is from a place in Dunedin called the Saucy Sapper um, I did pay for this so this isn't really an ad but they are related to I prefer this stuff because it's better quality than the supermarket stuff but I have got lots of these packets already so I'm just this is what I would call my um, backup food even if we are tramping overnight we always make sure we've got backup food and stuff in case we get rained in or something happens and we can't get out on the same day so i always carry a couple of these one square meals in my first aid kit or muesli bars just for emergencies if we get stuck and need food my worst fear is running out of food <laughs> So I always make sure I've got lots of food, especially when you're a parent, you don't want to be out in the bush and run out of food. It is the worst thing in the world when a toddler's hungry. All right, so now I've done the food. The next part of my gear is my cook set. Uh, so I have one bowl. I got this from an op shop. I think it's Cedar Summit. I got it from an op shop real cheap, like a couple of cents or something. And it folds down. It's a little bit broken, but it folds down, which is great because it's flat. And then I have my little cooker, which also doubles as a pot. So, grab this out. What I like about this cook set is it is really uh, compact. So, it's the size of exactly two cups. 
uh, it's super small, compact and convenient. So then I also have this, which is the top to it. Let's see how we go. There we go. And then that just screws on top of the gas canister. And then when we're not using it, uh, it all just, whew, that's loud, packs away. So I keep, whew, hopefully that makes sense. All right, hold on. So I put all that away. So that packs into there and it also has a little folding spoon, which is quite handy. Uh, like how it compacted all is. And of course a lighter. I also have a spare lighter in my first aid kit because, you know, first aid. Oh, and this is another spoon. This is like a long handled spoon, which is really handy for stirring up the kai. So yeah, that is the cook set. Next thing on the list is first aid and miscellaneous stuff like that. So this is a dry bag, this one I got from Kathmandu a little while ago. Just a small one and I use it to keep all my first aid stuff in things like my, hold on, I'll dissect it for you. So this is my first aid kit. I have bandage, uh, cloth pad, muesli bar, Ugh. Um, a spear lighter, blister tape, always a must, blister tape is a definite. Arnica cream, <sighs> matches in case the lighters don't work, tampon, spare torch batteries, electrolyte powder, I got that from Mighty 8 I think, and then a whole heap of bandages, I've got antihistamine, um, antihistamines this is for adults and babies, always a must especially if you're around places with wasps or you know any allergic reactions or things like that and then Nurofen vitamin C this is a must for me maybe it's because I'm a bit of a hippie but vitamin C is a must like if there's any like um just anything I don't know if someone gets seriously hurt handy to have <laughs> so yeah oh, and some chamomile tea so holy for plasters some more vitamin C so that is in there and the last thing in my first aid kit is a small pack of raisins because toddler <laughs> and you never know you might meet someone who has diabetes and might need a sugar boost and the last thing in my first aid kit is better before we carry on I'm going to add a little disclaimer my first aid kit is uh, just for me if you are going out make sure that you take your own first aid kit and it's curated to your needs and you take what you need because obviously everyone is different so don't follow my exact um, <laughs> example I also have a survival blanket but I don't know where it's gone it's disappeared but survival blanket is also a really good idea but uh, I also have a pack liner which is waterproof and it can be used kind of like a survival bag if need be one thing I found out with uh, things like first aid while you're tramping is a lot of things can be um, multi-purpose for instance if someone's bleeding and they need a tourniquet, tourniquet you could use a shirt to stop the bleeding and that's why I have a pad in my first aid kit for bleeding I actually should probably put another few pads in there as well but um, yeah every case is different and especially when you're tramping you're trying to save on a lot of weight but it's definitely not worth it uh, if you're thinking about life-saving things <laughs> So this is a personal locator beacon. This little thing here, you should be carrying it on your body because you can get separated from your pack when tramping. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Um, it, it, they have instructions on them. Uh, you just press the button, point it towards the ear, and then someone should come and rescue you within a couple of hours, if not faster, depending on the weather and things like that. Highly recommend that you get one of these. You can either rent it. Um, I've seen some fuel stations rent them out and you can also get them from places like MacPack. Uh, this is a GME, GME from Australia, this brand. I collaborated with them. So they are um, quite awesome. I have two PLBs. I also have one from MacPack as well. Uh, I always take one or both of them when I'm out tramping. Next thing is... Headlamps. 
This is a black diamond from MacPack. I think it cost me around 120 bucks. I can't remember exactly. This is a kids uh, one. It's a Petzl from the gear shop. I think it was $60. I can't quite remember. So we've got one each, but often I only take mine. But I'm starting to take both of them because it's kind of useful to have two it's always good to have two headlamps next thing is toilet paper it's always good to have a bit of paper you do need to go to the toilet in the bush and you're not at a dock toilet uh, so it's like right in the bush make sure that you bury it as deep as you can cover it with a whole lot of rocks but if you are staying in places like huts uh, you probably will still need toilet paper because a lot of dock huts don't have um, toilet paper you can like carry water in it um, I find it's quite good to take into like the alpines because you don't want to be washing up your dishes and stuff in lakes and rivers and contaminating them so I can pick the water up out of the lake or the river, take it away from the water source and then wash up my dishes and stuff so handy to have if you're tenting uh, not staying in a hut. Now next one is some ad content, these guys I collaborate with them, this is sandfly repellent, always handy to have when you're out in the bush, this one is natural and a healing balm which is also really good, you can use it as lip balm or to like heal anything that is ouchy, obviously I've used it a lot so I can't really read what's on it. Uh, survival Balm, this is my favourite, so these guys are It's All Good, they're a small company over on the west coast, I love using their products and I have an affiliate discount code, you can go over to Instagram for that, or I'll just put it in the comments here somewhere. So this one is really good, I use it all the time when we are out tramping, um, it's just really handy, especially if you're using for mild sunscreen or like to protect you against the weather. And of course my lip balm, so this is another one I take with me just for fun because you know you're out in all the elements and exposures so it's really good to protect your skin. Uh, sandfly repellent, not needed if you're going into the alpines because there's no sandflies out there but if you're tramping say Abel Tasman, the sandflies are horrific there so you will need sandfly repellent so probably get like five bottles of this. <laughs> And the last thing I like to chuck in my uh, pack is plastic bags. They weigh nothing, they take up pretty much no space and you never know when you're going to need a plastic bag. They come in useful all the time, especially for packing your rubbish out. Because guys, make sure you take everything out with you, especially your plastic rubbish because it does not decompose and we want to keep the country looking lovely and beautiful and clean. And we also want to watch out for the wildlife because a lot of conservation areas they um, have lots of wildlife and if you are leaving rubbish around or like food then the native birds could eat them and get sick and die so keep that in note. Tramping with a toddler so this is something that is important especially if we're staying in a tent is some books I always try and find some small lightweight ones at op shops uh, this time we're taking a colouring book, which we don't always take, but um, just a bit of a luxury that we're going to carry this time. And then I've got like a piece of chalk and some crayons. Chalk is great for entertaining toddlers because you can just pop it, um, they can draw all over the floor on the tent or in the floor on the hut and it keeps them entertained for ages and ages and it doesn't make a huge big mess. Next thing for tramping with a toddler is nappies. Uh, there's a few different options. If you're going overnight, it's easy as because you've got, you can just use a cloth nappy or something like that. Um, if you're somewhere that you can rinse them, you can take like a flat nappy. And what I did was I would rinse them because my toddler only goes uh, wheeze. He doesn't do number twos when we're tramping. Uh, he's like half toilet trained. So the only time we're using nappies is during the night time. So I just have a nappy cover and some compostable insert things that I got given. So I've got like a few of those if he um, wets and then I can just put the rest of them, oh, something or something rather. You know what I mean. <laughs> we either do this kind of system with uh, cotton flats because he's only wearing nappies at night time now or you can take disposables. If you're taking disposables uh, you could lay, lie them out in the sun during the day to dry them out so you're carrying less weight back or just bag them up and carry them with the rest of your rubbish <laughs> and make sure you put them in a rubbish bin at home. Alrighty, so that's food and miscellaneous crap all sorted. Next we come up to backpack and clothing. Water is important. 
So we take uh, three bottles like about this size, so about two and a half litres, depending on what kind of walk we're doing. Uh, camera, definitely essential for me. I take my Canon RP with a 50mm lens because it's lighter. A lot of people like to take bigger lenses if they're more into photos and stuff, but um, I'm trying to save on the weight at the moment. <laughs> I carry a spare battery and um, card in here in a plastic bag to make sure it stays dry. My camera usually goes at the top of my pack. Uh, if it's raining, I'll chuck it in the dry bag to make sure it stays dry, but I haven't had any issues with it drowning yet. Alrighty, now we're moving on to clothing. It's definitely easier with clothing in the summertime because it's warmer and you don't need as many layers, but we've been doing a lot of walks in the alpines where we've still needed a lot of layers, so um, yeah. <laughs> When it comes to a toddler, I much prefer to bring lots and lots of layers of clothing and make sure he stays warm because you definitely don't want him getting chilly. First layer is some merino woolly pants and then we have two uh, polypro thermal jumpers. We've got two of those. I often take three because it's better to take more than be unprepared. Uh, two pairs of merino socks. They're pretty small and lightweight and it always pays to have uh, more. <laughs> this is a cotton singlet for walking because we're going in summertime otherwise we only wear cotton when we are tramping in the summertime and only if it's really hot because cotton is rotten and if it gets wet or it gets cold then it extracts the temperature the it takes the um, it takes the heat away from your body whereas polypro and merino uh, thermals keep the heat in your body even if you get uh, wet and cold if that makes sense. So cotton is more likely to give you hypothermia than uh, merino or polypro. And of course we have a hat and um, underwear. So that is the base layers. Uh, next we have fleece, um, thermal layers. These go over top of the base layers and then um, up. <laughs> he's got these woolly pants that we got from Boutique Bums. This, that's an ad because um, they were given to us. They are really good for tramping because they're woolen and quite durable, especially for winter time. So we layer those on top of his um, base layers. So then he's got his fleece there. Um, this time we are gonna be taking his waterproof rain pants because it's supposed to be raining. So these are fleece lined rain pants. They're extra warm, great for tramping. They are from Therm Outdoors. So there we've got the um, base layer, mid layer, and then we've got the top layers, which is a puffer jacket. This one is made out of synthetic down. Um, and then we have his raincoat, which it goes on top of that, or you know, one or the other, depending on how cold it is. And then the rain pants. So that's all he has for an overnighter and he'd probably have that for multiple days as well because you don't need that much stuff when you go tramping. Like when it comes to clothing you can just wear the same clothes every single day because who cares you're out in the bush so you, who cares if you smell you just you know you need a layer to walk in and then some warm layers for at camp. Oh yeah and these are my crocs my ten dollar crocs from the warehouse super handy they are really good to have as hut shoes um if you're at the campground and you don't want to be wearing your tramping boots walking around the camp and uh, you can uh yeah most people have them but i don't take them every time it kind of depends how i'm feeling so everything in my pack it kind of depends on where we're going or what we're doing as to what i take and what i don't take so yeah, hope that is helpful. So um, yeah, any comments, uh, any questions, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and go follow me on Instagram for all of our daily posts and content and stuff like that. So yeah, cheers. And for sunny weather, of course, we always take sun hats. So we have a warm hat and a sun hat, especially when we're out in the Alpines, we generally need both of them at either times because the weather changes so quickly up there. Now for my clothing, uh, when I'm walking, I am like wearing pretty comfortable stuff. It kind of depends on how cold it is. It's summertime, I walk in um, shorts and a sports bra, just a really comfortable one. So I walk in those and then if it gets cold, I chuck my um, 
thermals on. So these are geothermals from MacPack. They are pretty comfortable and really, really warm and really lightweight. Uh, you can get thermals from places like the Warehouse and uh, MacPack, Kathmandu, any outdoor store has thermals and you can get any range of prices, whether it's Merino, Polypro, I personally find Merino and Polypro pretty much the same same. The only difference is Merino, you don't smell as much as you would in Polypro, but Polypro is still really good and really warm. And unlike wool that holds the moisture, they um, dry out much faster. So I got my thermals and then, so that's what I walk in. And then for camp, I've got my thermals and then I've got a Merino singlet that I sleep in. And then I've got a, um, a neck warmer which also doubles as a hat and then one of these things to put over my head like that because I don't like my ears getting cold I hate my ears getting cold so that is important uh, so that's my base layers and then my mid layer I have this fleece jumper which is ridiculously warm for my top layer I have a puffer jacket puffer this is the vest and then I so I have a puffer vest and then I've got a, um, oops, sorry, my raincoat was in the way. And then I have a long sleeve puffer jacket to go over top of that if we are in the cold temperatures. These are summer, um, summer down jackets, so they're not like hugely warm for winter, but if I layer them up with everything, then they, you're generally pretty good. And then lastly, I have my raincoat. <laughs> so raincoat is from Kathmandu. It um, was my brother's and I saw it and said, can I have it because I like the colour and he was like, sure. So I don't know how much it costs, but raincoats are generally around $200. Um, puffer vest, $100 or like 90 bucks, depending on the sale. I think this one was around, maybe it was around 80 bucks. I can't remember exactly how much they all cost. Um, I think this was like 20 bucks. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't have a clue. I remember my shorts, these were $70, I think, and I wear them all the time and I love them because they have pockets. I got these from Perky Peach on Instagram. They're awesome. Oh yeah, there's my other puffer jacket. It packs up really small, so it's like a must every time I go tramping. It doesn't take up much space or much weight. Next thing we have is hiking poles. I like these ones. These are Lecky brand, I think. Uh, I was given these, my uncle gave them to me. So I've had them for quite a few years now. They're pretty awesome. Uh, they unscrew and then you can make them long or they can stay short for a toddler. So I usually have one and then my toddler uses the other one. Next we have boots. These are my oboes. I got these in America a few years ago. I think they sell them at Kathmandu as well. Uh, they're pretty awesome. I have woolen socks to walk in. I don't have any other socks. I just have one pair because um, I don't know. I've never needed another pair. <sighs> Next I have Bubby's walking shoes. So these are his woolly thick woolen socks. They're pretty awesome. I think I got them from a place called NZ Naturals online. I can't quite remember. Uh, the boots are from Mountain Warehouse. They're not waterproof, which is one downside. So I'm searching for some small toddler size walking boots that are waterproof for next winter because winter time and snow, we're gonna need waterproof boots. And then this is my sleeping bag. It packs up, it packs up really small. It's, um, it goes down to three degrees, so it's not the warmest for winter, but for summer camping it's totally fine. Then I have my bedroll. This is an X-Ped. Um, it's like, I got it off Trade Me. It's a retired, I think it was used for um, a tour company or something like that. It's quite huge. As you can see, it's like half a meter long. It's the same length as my pack, but it fits both of us on it and it is incredibly comfortable and it's worth every bit of its um, size, especially when we're tenting. Next, I have my tent. This is Mountain Cattle. I got it off Trade Me for $200. It's 1.5 kgs. It's a pretty awesome little tent for us at the moment. Eventually, I'd love to get a lighter weight one um, that's a better quality brand and lighter and all that other crap, but at the moment, this is doing us just well. So, yeah. Pack liner is always handy because you can double it for first aid if need be. That was from MacPack. I think they're only like five bucks. They're dirt cheap. 
Then I have a foam bed roll for us to sit on while we're walking. It's always useful to have a bit of foam because you, it's, I don't know, I've always found it really useful while I'm tramping and hiking. My tramping pack is Osprey. Uh, I don't know how many liters it is. Uh, I think it's like 65 liters. I got this second hand from somebody off Instagram. Oh. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's not the liters. It just says 68. I don't know what that means. This is a, a Kestrel 68. Um, yeah, so it was second hand. It served me really well. It's really lightweight. It's been pretty awesome. So yeah, there you have it. That is my gear pack, everything that's in my tramping pack. I forgot to mention that when I am tramping, I wear this shirt because it's got long sleeves. It protects my skin from the pack and then if it's hot and sunny, it stops me from getting sunburnt because it's all covered up. So I'll, I'll wear this um, on top of my sports bra when I'm tramping and um, it's pretty comfy. It's just a really handy another layer that I really like. This is from Base Streetwear in Wanaka, so it's like a trendy brand, but it's been very convenient for tramping. So when I'm packing my tramping pack to go tramping, the first things I put in is the heaviest stuff. So tent, sleeping bag, bed roll, all goes at the bottom. So another frequently asked question is, what do I do on my period when I'm tramping? Uh, to be honest, I haven't really gone tramping on my period. I mean, it's one week out of the month, and if we're only going for like, overnights and stuff, um, it hasn't really happened. But in just in case, this is a moon cup. It's really handy because it, um, so you just kind of like fold it up, chuck it in. If you need to sanitize it, you just boil it in water. Uh, then you can just tip it out and carry on using. It weighs nothing, it's really small and light. Uh, I do carry tampons and pads in my first aid kit, but that's mostly for first aid. I prefer using this because the um, pads and tampons have lots of chemicals in them. Uh, they're really good for being sterile and using on wounds and stuff, but if I use them for more personal things, then I um, get a bit upset down there. So I chuck this in my pack, really handy, and I mean, I suppose if you need to do some shots, you could do some shots out of it or something like that. <laughs> Right, so once the biggest, bulkiest items go in, then I put uh, extra clothing layers down in all the cracks. Um, hats and stuff go in the side, so that they're easily accessible. Uh, if we've got gloves, we also put gloves in the side as well. And then toddlers activities, I'll kind of chuck in the back there somewhere. I put on my front, so this is where I carry things that I want to access while I'm walking. I carry my PLB in here as well, and then the snacks and stuff so they're easy to get at. I pop my knife in the top of my pack because it's often easy to access it. Water bottles go in the side. I put one on each side and I put an extra one inside if we're carrying an extra water bottle. Cooper goes in there as well. And then lastly, I chuck all the food in wherever it fits. Um, I keep my food in a food bag so that it's easy to keep track of it. Um, yeah. And then on top of everything, I put my camera. And if it's not there, I'm carrying it on my front or in the bum bag. So pack is all ready to go. And then in here is the stuff that we're walking in, like boots, walking poles, clothes, ready to go. And now it's time to hit the hills.